It's my pleasure now to introduce Barra Ettinger. Ettinger is an international visual artist, painter and theorist, psychoanalyst and philosopher, whose wide ranging artworks and writings have influenced art theory, feminism, cultural studies, philosophy and psychoanalysis. Her heart revolves around historical, transgenerational and personal trauma for women in war. She is participating in Espressioni at Castello di Rivoli, 2020-2021, and has exhibited in Cochibagno, 2018, Colori at Gam Turin and Castello di Rivoli in 2017. Thank you, Braca. I leave the floor to you. Okay. Do you hear me? Can you hear me? We, we, we do, we do. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would like to thank you, Caroline. And I stayed during a few talks uh, and I listened to, to Grada, to Anne, and to Hito. And I saw and I felt certain threads, certain interest and attention that, uh, that is uh, connecting somehow, connecting all of us somehow through you, because you put it together somehow. And um, I will start, I'm going to start with the work that Anna Imo to for the exhibition Espressioni, uh, which holds an importance for my thinking as well and for my art. Uh, can we show uh, for a moment the Caravaggio Narcissus? Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We yeah. might have a few problems with your mic. Would you mind not? Like, can you try again to speak? Because we see noises, we, we hear noises. No, no, okay. You can move on, sorry. Okay, I hope it's fine now. Um, so what we see here, in my view, death is what Caravaggio's Narcissus, searching for loving gaze through its own image in the water mirror, finds. Death does not reflect Narcissus' lasting eyes, his own lust, longing, but rather gazes at him. Here, well before the era of Freud's unconscious uncanny, not Eros impels the self-lover eye, but Thanatos. Death drive supplies the psychic energy for this veiled spell. For Freud, the projection of an impulse to gaze repressed under aggressive tendencies induces the double as a persecutory imaginary instance, source of anxiety. Caravaggio's Narcissus, autoerotic kneeling before oneself renders a spectral image of decay. Intuitively and logically, the figure is perceived as Narcissus after image. Yet, it rather absorbs and returns the painter's fore image. The unconscious carrier of his vision is his invisible subject matter. A visual sign that symbolizes afterlife appears when our eyes follow the trajectory of Narcissus' transformation of the knee. The knee, this potent phallic symbol, central source of enigmatic luminosity in the painting, turns into a memento mori, merc form, hinting that the lasting gaze of Thanatos looks from the painting's unconscious, retroactively seized through a future painting, San Girolamo, 
where replica of this precise blood color form transmutes into a skull. Beauty in Narcissus is the phantasmatic screen that hides the gaze that asks us to remember our human mortality. We can take out the image now. We will return to it later. For Freud, repetition is a major manifestation of death drive. It testifies to its activation. If psychic narcissistic gaze is a result of a primal separation from the archaic other, the archaic mother, repressed according to trajectories of castration and anxiety, the eye of Narcissus and the gaze he longs for remain forever split. This gay and this gaze can this gaze can only appear accompanied by sheer anxiety in form of the double dusk shallow shadow of a self aggressively projected onto rejected otherness. The otherness is split to avoid symbiosis, to avoid fusion with the other, first of all the mother conceived as death and self-annihilation, where grave and womb are fused. Um, through the are fused through the lenses of historically transmitted cultural confusion. Uncanny anxiety aroused by art opens an interval from such sheer anxiety. With Caravaggio, we see that before the modern conception of narcissism, Freud, where one can only love itself or one only they can love whoever protects oneself or one can only love its ego ideal, the concept of subject as a being towards death, here we are with Heidegger, and beauty as the barrage from death, this is Lacan, a similar crystallization of subject appears already in Caravaggio in a nutshell, along a masculine cultural filiation that reflects father-son internalized relations. Father and son, old men, young men. In contemporary terms, Caravaggio unveils fascination as a deadening freeze, what Lacan calls fascinum. The narcissistic wound of the figure is transparent. We cannot see it, but its ideal and the failure of this ideal is very visible. It condemns the subject into isolation during self-abandonment to auto-erotic longing. Now to use Lacanian terms to address psychic life, the gaze directed from the object, the object of the gaze to the subject, to our eye, is projected on a phantasmatic internal screen. I'm going to talk about outside screen, internal screen. This internal screen of fantasy can, up to a certain extent, be compared to an exterior screen, to the video, to the digital screen, to the film. Right now, we are talking about the digital screens as the major phenomena. Taken as metaphors for the relations between passion and desire, the eye, the passionate eye, and the gaze we desire to have can never meet, except on a phantasmatical screen. If they meet in the real, this will happen through a psychotic undifferentiation in the form of hallucination, symbiotic fusion, where the self disappears. In the phenomena of digital stupor, I'm going to talk about digital stupor. And I will explain the difference between stupor and trauma. Uh, 
already I think that Egranda started to, to, to put this difference on, the, on our table. Uh, the phenomena of digital stupor, in the phenomena of digital stupor, such a fusion is offered and actualized. Stupor, as a result of inundation and accumulative instant of inundation in endless plasticity. The screen gaze, that's this, the, the, the symbiosis already, as phantasmatic mental object is hiding inside the virtual real gaze screen that sub and subdues us through it. So we are subdued to the screen gaze. That's one of the point to bring about from point of view of our psyche, from a mental point of view. In a moment, I will talk about the feminine and maternal matrixial relations between gaze and eye, where the screen can offer possibility of encounter without fusion. This demands awareness to the ways the digital gaze, which numbs us as a gay, us as a gay screen, gaze screen, captures our phallic narcissistic urges and lusts and uses its archaic ancient mechanism where empathy is just reflexive, automatic, empty empathy. So the patterns of narcissism that are, that are behind the painting of Caravaggio are relevant to the patterns that the internet and the digital screen captures us human beings. I speak of digital stupor and addiction, not trauma since the phenomena here is of obsession with immediate jouissance, with immediate pleasure. What is at stake here is psychic and mental time. Time is the, su the subject of my discussion and how time enters painting. Stupor and trauma have very different relations to time. Addiction and trauma testify to different motives for repetition. Addiction implies immediate enjoyment without desire. Trauma implies the possibility of desire and time for mental elaboration. The phenomenological experience of social digital media is of accelerating addiction. The subject repeatedly and endlessly looks for the enjoyment achieved by immediate satisfaction of needs in terms of phantasmatic symbiotic fusion, leaving no time space for desire to appear, no time space for wandering, douleur, and lamenting, witnessing, for caring the other, for caring for the other, no time to develop love, care, and affective responsibility, and no possible passage from elementary empathy to ethical compassion. No possibility for imagination. Subjective time that negotiates past and future in the present and gives depth to psychic time collapses, engulfed by inundation and reactivity. The human subject becomes the object of the screen gaze a fused screen gaze in symbiosis with the psychic eye and voids empty desire. The screen fused with the gaze become thus a subjectivizing agency, a gaze screen that controls the subject who becomes its object. If our lasting eye is the object of the screen gaze, when we are split from it. Since we now are the tools of a gay screen eye symbiosis, subject and stupor become one. We become ele elements in what I named in 1990, 
before the social digital age, before Facebook and the Instagram and even the telephone portable. Uh, the phallic web of webs. Whatever are the web of our connection become digested through a, a phallic web of webs. Here, narcissism and death drive manifest themselves together in the collapse of humanized future. That's another point I'm making, the point about time and the point about future. When a dying face is reflected to Narcissus in Caravaggio's painting, it tells us something of our contemporary era. Though the practices available via digital media and new technologies are entirely different, the human condition haunts us through our primordial narcissistic phylogenetic inheritance and our cultural heritage of phallic paradigm. Our task to face them both is now urgent. The difference between fascinum and stupor is that though both stand for a freezing effect, in stupor, even fascination is deleted. The difference between shock and stupor, uh, in my definition, is that shock, uh, while can turn into trauma, shock can turn into trauma and then can be retroactively retrieved in a process of curative care Stupor cannot motivate such a move. In stupor, not only the past doesn't function as a psychic domain of nourishment and memory, joy, suffering, lamentation, and hope, but also the present at the service of jouissance and impatient future as immediately, immediacy now, the psychic future is in collapse. The instant future holds and arrests the present. The breathless instant future is the new psychic present time unit. The breathless present is the new psychic future in vicious circle. Instant future units intention toward very limited horizons, each time a little horizon, self multiplying to reformate us according to our very ancient narcissistic patterns. A screen gaze in symbiosis with the subject I is conditioned by a future partly programmed and partly emergent in its own poiesis, in its autopoiesis. And we recognize it either through pleasure or through anxiety. Douleur, the, the pain of lamentation becomes impossible. Uh, desire becomes impossible. Loving care becomes impossible. And the subject is an I, the desire itself is subjugated. It is the object that, uh, of the gaze and its own desire. Now I'm going to move to the possibility of the matrixial. And I will read to you something that uh, was written in the 1990 and relates to painting. It can, technology is not the question here. It can relate to other uh, me, technological means uh, in, pro, in producing the artwork. But I talked about painting and how the painting and the one I, in my painting, the one I look at carries both the rays of the phallic gaze, the extensions of the symbiotic gaze, and the aerial of what I call the matrixial gaze. The phallic gaze excites us while threatening to annihilate us in its emergence on the screen. The symbiotic gaze invites us to sink inside it while threatening to annihilate us together with the screen and the matrixial gaze thrills us while fragmenting us scattering but and joining together turning us into witnesses 
that participate in a drama wider than that of our own selves. A matrixial gaze is non-symbiotic, though it is joining together. It can differentiate itself by awareness to the deadening affective numbness that accompanies the fusion between the our eye and the gaze screen. The matrixial awareness is affective transubjectivity. It is resistance both to this phallic split, to the split between us and screen, for example, and to the endless fragmentation, global hyperconnectivity. We suggest a model of joining together, which is allows differentiation at every moment, and there enters precisely the human freedom, freedom rift that does not relate to the idea of the entirely new, to the imaginary newness of a newborn, but to a recognition of birth with birthing, which take time, the deceleration of time, time space duration of gravity that allows both to differentiate and to join. This means that it allows the aesthetic to penetrate the ethics and enlarge it. The artist, what I call art, the artistic beyond creativity takes care um, in the work that interests me um, um, of the deceleration of time to reopen the future. Deceleration enables endurance, patience, the time to become concerned, the time to worry and witness, and the time it takes to create a desire. Awareness to the interval time sphere where in-betweenness and jointness are not symbiotic fusion and the newborn is never entirely new allows the crystallization that of emergence and fading that can resist symbiosis and resist acceleration. Not resist in a sense that we don't need it or it's going to change. Acceleration is going to continue, but we need the awareness that this, to what an extent it can also become an attack on our possibility to imagine and possibility to think which go together. The digital stupor drones us in accelerated hypersymbiosis. Awareness to the feminine matrixial maternal sphere, where only a few each time, several few uh, limited webs, not multiple, transjective strings and threads in filters us by way of affects of wonder and care. This offers a resistance to the accelerated hyperconnectivity, to the endless hyperfluid plasticity, that in my view acquire in fact the very ancient phallic controlling agency. That's the new phallic controlling agency. Uh, and we, we have difficulty to identify it because it is fragmented to thousands of uh, multiplicities that control us together. In our days, we have become the object then of an eye screen gaze symbiotic poiesis and matrixial poiesis, which I called co-poiesis together, is not such a sim sim symbiosis or sympoiesis. The fused gaze screen that reflects the subject to itself via endless fluid digital surface gaze screens is dynamized though by the same old narcissistic psychic apparatus. The human subject is manipulated by it precisely because it parasites, parasites the narcissistic thirst and the phallic fantasies. 
Narcissism promotes addiction to hyperconnectivity nourished by visual devouring, devouringly immersive hyperinfiltration in mediatic digital acceleration. Subservious to this soul draining, exhausting inundation of object screen gaze, lead us to our own phantasmatic gaze screens and compute, is computed to dehumanize the human. It is nourished by our desire for inflated and ideal mirroring. Here we get narcissism again for our time. The surface gaze screen subject like agency might turn us into object even when we master its tools and we play with it. But awareness to this new desiring machine and consciousness serve as humanizing resistance. To face this new consciousness in an amount, in an amount of critique and resistance, we are called for awareness, the kind of awareness that certain art that does use a certain conception of time and no matter what kind of technology it uses, it could be digital and virtual, invites for. The new virtual screen gaze renders the subject produced as its shadow, prey to the illusion of endless human plasticity, but indifferent to the humane. When the difference between subject and narcissism itself is obliterated, the interval that allows the uncanny affect in art also disappears. The screen gaze satisfies our lust while producing emotional desensitization, hurting our ability to discern grace, to process douleur, ours and that of the world. Why is the feminine matrixiality not the phallic matrix of simulacre, crucial to this discussion. The feminine matrixiality allows to keep the intervals that allows for carrying rather than accumulating. It, and I think it is also, uh, I, I, I talk here to the questions of Caroline. What is the role of museum? It enables border linking and border spacing in webs of few, of severality that are affected, that is uh, embodied being, we are embodied being, even in a world of hyperconnectivity in the web of webs. I return to Caravaggio's touching hands. If you, if you see the painting, one of the hands is actually like traversing the surface of the, the lake or the mirror or the water and touching. And we can, I feel that there is transported through that, that death laments Narcissus. It is death who feels sorry for Narcissus. The skull me rotates inside the abstract pentagonal circulation of figures. Is its beauty a screen? that separate us only from death as one's only horizon and abduction to fascinum. Here, as I return now to the question of narcissism and death drive with which I started, it is in order to say that it is the relation of the digital to time as it conditions the subject who is in a stupor that is the heart of my concern and my presentation. Our relation to time is in the field of aesthetics with ethics. In the period when the feeling of subjective present depended on the past and the time of the future was in relation to present which carries a past, the idea of a subject as being towards death, this is Heidegger, could still be a support for the subject. In our area of growing digital stupor, where the present depends on the collapse of psychic future 
and merges with instant futures, short term futures, the concept of being towards death cannot serve to humanize us. Neither can I think, therefore I am humanize us. It's not about thinking anymore. Feminine maternal matrixial awareness gained through the idea of a subject as being towards birth with birthing. There are two, it takes two. There is no absolute newness and there is no entire isolation in the, in the unconscious. Well, the, the idea of a subject as being towards birth and birthing co-emerging, a co-emerging being allows us to think ourselves uh, to ask ourselves whether we are still participating in subjectivity as encounter and alliance in copoiesis or not. That is, if an ethical subject position is available through our transitivity and transubjectivity, or are we being subdued to the symbiotic autopoiesis of a virtual real gaze screen that offers us jouissance at the expense of our capacity to desire. For Freud, as I said before, repetition is reactivation of death drive. From the angle of matrixial psychoanalysis, repetition is not the effect of death drive alone when it is energized and eroticized by this matrixial libido related to a psychic dimension of the future, which allows, among other things, for a donation of meaning to unbearable past events and to trauma. When deceleration collapses, trauma can become inaccessible and Eros retires from the scene. To end, um, I will... Um, and I will end with this, um, that uh, for the, for, to use the term of trauma, we need to check whether our reality still allows a connection with the past and a kind of a projection, projection to a long uh, future. And uh, such a future and such a past are contained as long as we make this difference between gaze and screen and eye and allow the gaze and within the screen to approach our eyes. The double then becomes witness as it mirrors the trauma of self within other and another effect of fascination appears beyond the narcissistic spell. Uh, which I called fascinance and we cannot uh, get into that. Uh, I would like to finish by showing just this painting as a whole and, and say that the way the, the abstract relates here to the apparition of the figuralities from different uh, times uh, relates to the, the depth effect which I'm trying to work with in the painting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bracha. Thanks. I would just like to wrap up and ask reading what you had just presented. So, Bracha started with an analysis of a Caravaggio's Narcissus in terms of that drive, to end with a discussion of care, deceleration, compassion beyond empathy in relation to her paintings, in particular, Eridis, The Grace, and Demeter, to then explore the possibilities of matriarchal gaze and poiesis and problematize the accelerated hyperconnectivity and symbiosis whose effect of digital stupor are assigned to a fused screen gaze in symbiosis with the psychic high. Thank you, Braca. Thank you.